Hi, I'm Kirk Maston from Maston Labs, and this is a practical camera review of the Pentax 645. This is a medium format camera. It takes film. Uh, it's a very simple camera, and overall, it is an incredible camera for the value if you wanted to get into medium format or you wanted to have a backup system to a much more expensive medium format camera, such as the Contax 645. This camera comes up in conversation all the time when people are talking about the Contax because the Contax cameras are so expensive now. They're between three and $4,000 for a basic kit, whereas you can get this Pentax 645 and the 75 millimeter 28 kit lens used for about 250 bucks. There aren't too many drawbacks to this camera. Uh, it, it's a solid, solid portrait camera. The lens is super sharp, wide open, but there are a few drawbacks that you should know about uh, that you might want to consider. So the main, th the main thing that can be a problem with this camera is that the shutter speed has a maximum of one one thousandth of a second. If you're shooting a faster film like Portra 400, in broad daylight and you're wanting to get that wide open look at 2.8, you're going to be overexposing your film by a few stops. Now that's not really a big deal because color negative film can take a lot of overexposure and if you're using something like Fuji 400H, you should be overexposing by two or three stops. Um, that's how you kind of really unlock the beauty of that film. However, with Portra 400, you start to get kind of a yellow cast to your images as you get, you know, higher and higher in overexposure. So, you can be a little bit limited by that one one thousandth of a second. The second thing that you should know is that this camera does not have interchangeable backs, meaning that once you start a roll of film, you have to finish it. You can either just rewind it if you need to change films or just try to find a way to, to pace yourself so that by the time you reach the end of the film, you can put the, the, the next film in that you need, maybe a higher speed film for indoors at the right time. So it just requires a little bit of planning, but it can be a real pain to uh, have to waste either a roll of film or not change exactly when you want to. The other thing about this camera that you should know is that the shutter is kind of loud. So I don't know how well that comes across, but to me it sounds like kind of like a wheezing animal like there's a spring loose or something. I thought even my camera might be broken when I bought it, but that's the actual sound of the Pentax shutter. It's, it's pretty primitive. The downside to such a noisy shutter is that if you're really close to someone trying to get a candid picture, they're definitely gonna hear you. So I can't imagine really using this for street photography uh, unless you're in a really, really loud place. And I would never use this at a ceremony during a, we a wedding because everybody's going to be paying attention to you and not the couple, and that can be really upsetting. Um, other than that, there's no real major limitations. Uh, unlike a lot of other cameras that take really weird batteries, this takes AA batteries, which you can find anywhere in the world, and they last a really long time. So you hardly ever have to change batteries, and when you do, you can find batteries anywhere. And what that makes is that this is an incredible travel camera. Um, you can go anywhere in the world, any kind of conditions, you can shoot it, you can find batteries. And the best thing is, is that if it's stolen or you drop it in the ocean or a rock falls on it, uh, you're only out a few hundred dollars and not thousands of dollars. So now that we've covered kind of the basics of the Pentax 645, I'd like to introduce the Contax 645, which is often in the same conversation as this camera. I bought this camera as a backup to my Contax 645. And later I found out that if you added a Photodiox adapter and this Pentax 67 lens, which is a 105 millimeter 2.4 lens, if you add these onto this camera, you get nearly the same results as this much, much more expensive camera. So it's just as simple as taking off the kit lens, putting on your adapter, and then putting this on your Pentax. And now you have kind of a, I don't know, a poor man's Contax 645. You've got a beautiful portrait lens. Uh, it's super easy to focus, super bright viewfinder, and you get nearly the same results as this much, much more expensive camera. One thing that, that's really different between these two cameras is that with the Pentax 645, this 105 lens on it acts like kind of a tight 
a normal lens. So when I say normal, I mean like a 50 millimeter lens, kind of a normal angle of view for a human being. This shoots a little bit tighter. So with the contact 645, this 80 millimeter lens translates to an actual normal lens, like a 50 millimeter on your 35 millimeter camera. Uh, this is a little bit tighter. So if you're used to a certain working distance with this camera, you're gonna have to back up just a few steps with this one. However, the the look, the depth of field is, is almost identical and it's totally worth it. The only reason that you would still probably, you know, if you could afford it, want the contact 645 is that you can have interchangeable backs, meaning that you don't have to plan when your rolls end. You can just take off the entire back and put a new one on and switch film anytime you want. Uh, the shutter blackout is much shorter. It's a much crisper and tighter shutter. It doesn't sound like it's a wheezing animal. It sounds really nice. And the other thing is that this camera overall is just a nicer experience than this camera. I mean, it's really well put together. This is a Mercedes-Benz and this is like a Ford Escort. So that's kind of something to consider. And, you know, it really depends on what you need, but for the money, you should definitely get this camera if you're starting out in film, if you want medium format, there's no better deal. And if you already have a contact and so you need a backup, this is a great camera to have. So overall, I give it super high ratings. It's a little quirky to learn how to use, but for a practical camera, it's amazing and you should check it out.